Well, as I have promised, this is the fourth video of the second in class of the Asahi class, which is a follow-on to the Akazuki class. Four Akazuki class destroyers were built. Two of these Asahu classes were built, Asahi. And this is the second one that was uh, commissioned in 2019, in February, the Shiranui, or the Shiranui. And it is a very, very capable ship. And as I said, uh, when I got this thing, it is very uh, detailed. You can see the many details I added since the last film, which include all of the metal uh, railing and many metal, uh, various metal equipment. A lot of touch-up paint, the stand. Also finished up the touch-up on the on the helicopter here towards the rear of the aircraft with the netting. You can also see, of course, the uh, the water markings, the depth markings, showing how above, how much. How high above the uh, waterline stripe, and how below, how far below the waterline stripe uh, this thing extends. Also, you can see that it has a small um, vertical fire scout drone that it can carry. So this carries one. SH-60J, which is like very similar to the U.S. Romeo uh, Seahawk, the MH-60R. This is the Japanese version of that. I also put a Japanese battle flag on the rear and on the front. We put the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense ensign there right forward of the uh, chains for the anchors and you can see both anchors right there uh, large uh, and very effective hole radar this ship also carries back here in the in the back you can see it carries a uh, sonar towed array but uh, like I say, it's a very detailed and a very good looking, very good looking ship. We've got uh, a number of uh, light armament on the ship altogether. Six 50 caliber or 20 millimeter uh, machine guns. That's for close in defense if they're in port or being attacked by very small ships or boats like they might see in the uh, Hormuz Straits or something like that. They've also of course got these vertical launch MK-141 missile launchers. Each one of those, each one of those uh, 32 has four Evolved Sea Sparrow missiles in it, which have a range of up to close to 50 miles. They can be used for those small boats as well. And so if you have a small boat, you know, of this size, or even smaller, like we've got on the other side here, in this non-rigid boat, those, uh, those types of missiles would just absolutely completely take them out. The ship also carries eight Japanese equivalents of the most modern harpoon missiles. 
they have a little better range and a little better uh, <clears throat> warhead than the original harpoons. And so they're a very effective missile for long range uh, attack against other ships. However, they can also be uh, programmed to attack uh, surface contacts on land. So this is a very, very well put together vessel, uh, 6,800 ton uh, size. Now the Japanese have also built larger size vessels before between that, the four Akazukis, which were uh, all four of them were um, commissioned in 2011 and 2012. They built two more advanced Otago class Aegis vessels, which are similar to the U.S. Flight 2A uh, and are capable of the full array of uh, missiles, including the uh, anti-ballistic missiles that uh, reach up into near space. And uh, they built two more of those. They have, of course, uh, built two more of the Zemu class, or well, two of the Zemu class aircraft carriers that will be carrying the F 35Bs, and then these two. So, since, uh, since 2011, uh, uh, the Japanese have built two, four, six, eight, uh, plus four, so 12 ships in those eight years. And they're, they're all very capable ships. I wanted to show this one as it was built. There, I've got four videos out on this ship now uh, from the day that I got it and basically showed all of the pieces. This is a resin uh, vessel, so it's quite a bit heavier and more sturdy than your normal plastic uh, ships. And uh, very good detail and very good fit on those resin pieces, I have to say. I, I'm very, very satisfied with the fit and uh, with the feel of the ship and the detail because there's a lot of detail on this ship. Arts Technique built this ship. I've also got one of the Akazukis. I think I showed it in the first or second video to compare the two. And uh, they are very good, good vessels, uh, excellent vessels for uh, supporting and escorting their uh, either their LPDs or any one of their four carriers, the Hayuga class or the Izimu class. And uh, I'm just uh, very pleased with it, very pleased with the ship, very pleased with the, the Japanese as our allies and their decision to uh, buy the F-35Bs and then embark them on their carriers. They're going to have uh, 28 to 30 of those aircraft on the Izumu class and uh, the new Japan the new Chinese carriers are larger vessels which uh, displace close to 70,000 tons whereas the Izumu displaces between 30 and 35,000 tons but the Izumu is carrying 30 fifth generation stealth strike aircraft and uh, the J-15 while it is a, a very good aircraft and 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 has been uh, improved over the uh, <clears throat> SU aircraft that the that the, uh, the the Russians carried on their single carrier which I think is in dry dock right now uh, and even though those are good aircraft, they are not going to be able uh, to stand up to the 
fifth generation F-35Bs. So the Chinese are looking somehow to find an F-35B that has the capability to do a short takeoff and vertical landing. They haven't come out with one yet, so out to sea on their two carriers that are completed and the third one that is near completion, as I understand it. Now, they've got a good number of uh, <clears throat> J-15s, uh, which, like I say, are an improved version of the SU-33, but they don't have anything that can compare to the F-35. Of course, the Koreans and potentially, it sounds like the Australians, India is getting that game, Italy, uh, United Kingdom, and Spain all are going to carry those F-35Bs. And uh, that's a very, very powerful uh, set and set up for their, each one of them has at least two, some have three aircraft carriers. United States is taking four of its LHA and LHD and outfitting them with 24 to 28 F-35Bs in an escort carrier role. And so that adds to the dozen large nuclear carriers the United States has, which will be carrying the F-35C, which has a bigger wing and can carry more fuel and more ordnance. And so uh, the United States, under President Trump, has has really put together an answer to the uh, last 10 years of the Chinese buildup. And that's not to mention the, uh, the submarine difference, which is a very critical difference as well. Uh, the Chinese have built some very good uh, diesel electric submarines, uh, the last group of which has air, uh, air independent propulsion but they're not as fast and they don't have the range that the U.S. Uh, Virginia class has and the Virginia class now has 17 or 18 subs and, and, and continuing to build uh, with the, the new class that's extended and will be able to carry 20 more uh, vertical launch missiles. Uh, they are going to perform both an SSN, which is an attack submarine role, and an SSGN role, which is a guided missile submarine. So those submarines are, are a significant and very strong deterrent and danger uh, to the Japanese, I mean, to the Chinese aircraft carriers. And... Uh, the United States is building those rapidly and and has put forth a, a real answer uh, uh, to the Chinese buildup. And it's, it's good to see that happening, quite frankly. Uh, the United States also, uh, as I understand it, later this year will be testing, they've already tested the laser system at sea, they're going to be testing the railgun at sea, finally. That was supposed to happen in 2011 or 2012, and it was canceled by President Obama. But it has been tested many, many times on land, and they want to put it out to sea and test it, and then uh, build both 127 millimeter and 155 millimeter uh, projectiles for it. And that would be for the Virginia class, hopefully for the. Uh, new CGX class, which we hope will be a offshoot of the Zoom Walt Hull uh, with one smaller or one less 155 millimeter gun and uh, 20 to 40 more vertical launch missiles. Uh, so they will have probably at least 128. Uh, vertical launch missiles, and some have postulated 140. Uh, so that 
buildup continues by both the United States and other nations in the Western Pacific, including, of course, China. And uh, this is part of the Japanese buildup. Not as many uh, vessels, but really good vessels. They're very squared away. And uh, from the many friends that I have, who are in the Navy, the U.S. Navy, including my own relatives, uh, were very squared away, very happy with the Japanese, very happy with the Koreans, very happy with the Australians, and glad that they're, they're with us. Uh, this is the, uh, the main mast there. Uh, there is a ladder that goes all the way up to that last uh, frame there with the highest white radome in it and uh, it's really nice because these the Akazuki class and the Otago class all have uh, that type of uh, capability to allow their sailors to climb up and do uh, maintenance work on the many many uh, electronic components that are on these masts the same applies for the US Burke class, and the Burke class is approaching uh, over 70 ships and more to be built. I expect by the time the Burke Flight uh, 3 class is finished that there will be nearly a hundred Burke class and at least 20 uh, Ticonderogas that will ultimately be replaced by hopefully 24 of whatever the new CGX is. So, there you have it. This is the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force DD-120 Shiranui. <laughs> Can't pronounce those very good, you guys. Uh, Japanese folks and allies will forgive my butchering of the pronunciation, but a great ship. Uh, fits real well with the Akazuki class. And we're glad to have you guys on uh, with us and working hard, as always, every year to uh, continue to develop our capabilities together so that we fit together like a hand in glove. Appreciate it. You've seen all, all four of these uh, videos now and what, uh, and what it ends up making when it's finished. We'll go one more time down the down the extent of the of the hull. Beautiful bridge, beautiful equipment there, range finders, spotlights, binoculars up there by the bridge, the main mast, got the smokestacks there, both of the ship's boats. Uh, small uh, cranes to help load uh, missiles and other equipment onto the ship. The uh, life buoys on either side. You've got your hangar right there and then on top a whole bunch of electronic equipment as well as self-defense guns. You've got a nice size landing pad here and uh, can carry both a manned and an unmanned helicopter. Great propulsion and uh, great capability to be very uh, steady and smooth in the water and uh, really really good sonar capability. These two ships specifically have a little upgrades to their sonar for anti-submarine warfare. So there you have it. The latest Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force destroyer. Thanks for watching. I'd like to invite you to join up with, subscribe to, put your two cents worth in, on the <clears throat> on
on the uh, uh, my channel, Jeff Heads uh, Modern One Three Hundred Fiftieth Scale Warship and One Seventy Second Scale Aircraft Channel on YouTube. Thanks a lot and hope you had a great Christmas. Goodbye.